All right, in the previous video, we enabled the actions through our connection with Next.js, the API routes, and our action handlers for login and sign up. This is creating JWT tokens, ultimately, that have roles applied to them, are signing cryptogra uh, cryptographically, and are then able to be read by our system. Well, how do, how do they get read? That is actually something that we need to have a look at. Uh, before we continue on to the next step. And to do that, we actually enable it through our uh, Docker Compose file here. And that is a setting for a Hasura GraphQL JWT secret. This is the configuration that says the, the secret and the type that are being passed in or assigning this token, I can use that to read an incoming token and see which roles are, are on that token. And so that is a, a setting we needed to apply. We needed to apply a secondary setting as well, and that is the unauthorized role for anonymous. This is a default role that will be inherited by all requests coming into the system that don't have any tokens on there or no, or the Hasura admin secret. We can use that role to give access to specific functionalities, namely things like logging in and signing up, because if you don't, if you haven't signed up yet, that's you, you are anonymous. And so we need to have a way to expose at least some of these uh, bits of data and, and information to unauthorized users. And so I went ahead and I made those in my Docker Compose and rebooted it because you've seen me do that before a number of times now. And I've gone ahead and I have added those to my project settings here as well under environment variables, I've modified those here. So we've got these two environment variables now synced between our local version of Hasura and this version that we have running in the cloud. Now, what we need to do is actually be able to go ahead and access these, uh, this login and sign up. What we can do, and this is a great way to, exp uh, to observe this, is if we go to the Explorer, you'll see I have access to everything, right? I have all my rows because I'm using my accessor admin secret as a passed in header. But if I, when I turn this off, I have access to nothing <laughs> because I haven't given access to an anonymous uh, user in any way. And if I check mutations, which is where my sign up and login live, we'll also see that I have, yeah, no introspection, nothing. I have no access to any data there. I can't use any, any functionalities. But if I go to my actions here now, and I go to login, and I go to permissions, uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say that the permissions for this actually is for anonymous. And I'm going to go ahead and actually uh, save this. And while I'm here, I'm going to turn on this permission for user as well because it just sometimes happens that people will try to re-log in or something and they're already logged in or there's a token sticking around. And so we don't want to cause an error in this regard. So sign up, we're going to do the same thing here. Now we're going to go to permission. We're going to turn on the anonymous role. And we only have to uh, insert these once and then they're inserted into our metadata. And so then the roles uh, per are persistent from then on out throughout the rest of the UI. And if I go now to the API Explorer, I'm still in my unauthorized uh, role here. But if I go and I explore now, we'll see that I actually have access to login and sign up as these anonymous, uh, this, yeah, anonymous user. And so that actually already handles a large use case of what we need where we'll be able to log in a user and sign up a user inside of our system. And so now while we're here handling permissions, let's go ahead and handle the use case where our user actually is authenticated and we wanna give them some specific permissions of things that they're able to access. Well, that's quite easy to do as well. We're gonna head inside of our data field here and we're gonna to go to friend and we're gonna initialize, uh, initialize our permissions by giving them access to their own data. So we're gonna to go to the permissions here and I'm gonna go underneath the user field and we're gonna first allow them to be able to actually read their own information. So we're gonna say that they are allowed with a custom check here where the ID is going to equal the incoming XSERA user ID field that's uh, listed inside of that JWT token. So if, as long as that matches, they'll be able to access, in this case, all of their information. And I'm gonna turn off password because I don't need to access their encrypted version of the password. That's something that we'll handle for login behaviors. They'll be able to do ID and username and that'll actually handle uh, everything we need for there. We're going to allow them to uh, not worry about aggregate query permissions for now. And so we're just gonna go ahead and turn that on for our select statement. Regarding the uh, insert, we're not gonna allow them to insert any user information. That is something that we handle ourselves as admins. And when it comes to the update behavior, 
we're going to allow uh, no updating there as well either because in this case, that's something that they, um, we're not gonna let them do. However, we will be nice and we will go ahead and allow them to uh, delete themselves. And so we're gonna say with a custom check and uh, we, we'll actually go ahead and use the same one as our select statement. So we'll save permission and now they'll be able to uh, delete themselves. Okay, so they can select and they can delete, but they're not going to be able to update any user information. If we added things like address or whatever else, then yeah, it would make sense to give them that permission. But in this case, it's their username and their password, which are identifiers in our system, and we can't let them run amok with that. That being said, what we want to do next is actually set some specific permissions for them when it comes to uh, inserting orders. So when it comes to inserting orders, what we want them to be able to do is when we say insert row here for permissions, the user on insert, we're gonna have a couple of very uh, specific pieces of data that they're gonna uh, allow to do. So we're gonna say with custom check, uh, we're gonna say where the ID I'm sorry, on insert, it'll be without any checks, but what we're gonna do is have a column preset here. And that column preset is gonna be that the friend ID needs to be from a session variable and that is gonna be the accessora user ID. So we are pre-populating this column with the data coming in on that JWT token. So this way we can, we can guarantee in our system that those are always gonna be associated. They are allowed to insert uh, the, uh, the pizza ID and they are allowed to insert the ID itself. And from there, we'll go ahead and say that that will actually allow us uh, all the permissions we need for insert. And then when it comes to select, they'll be able to, without, with custom checks, they'll be able to select all of their own pizzas. Uh, and we'll say they can do that where the friend ID equals the access or user ID. And then they can access all of their information and that's no problem. So we'll go ahead and save those permissions. We'll also allow them to do aggregates on the orders. And on update, we're not going to actually allow updating there because that's something we want to remove from, uh, we're not going to be able to update any pieces of that data. However, deleting, we will say that they are not allowed to do a delete as long as the friend ID is equal to the uh, accessory user ID again. So we can save that permission. And we have a relatively well handled uh, inserting of orders. When it comes to pizzas, we're going to be able to do the same thing here as well. So we're going to handle this permission wise. We're going to repeat the same steps here where we're going to allow for an insert and we're going to allow uh, them to uh, without any checks we're going to have to we're going to say that uh, the id and the title so they're able to insert pizzas all day long that's not a problem and uh, we're going to go ahead and save those permissions and uh, when it comes to uh, the select statements they can also select all the pizzas there's no private pizzas in the backyard pizza party so we're going to go ahead and say with uh, without any checks, they're able to uh, read them all. Let's maybe limit them uh, to, we'll say something like 10 rows to make sure they're not killing my system. Or maybe we'll say limit that to 25 rows. And then we'll go ahead and say, yes, they can access the ID and the title. We'll say permissions. And uh, update, we're going to want to be able to now update, once it's in there, it's in there. We're not gonna allow updating there and deleting, we're not gonna allow deleting. So once it's in the system, it's in the system and that's it. And um, our admin will handle the rest. Okay, so they can handle a pizza, they can make a pizza order, they can insert a pizza. Um, we should potentially modify this model here so that pizzas also have a creator. And we're gonna actually, so that'll actually allow us to let the creator update their, their pizzas. So what we're gonna say, is we're going to modify this role here and on the uh, column we're going to go ahead and add a creator id and uh or what we call it the original friend and we're going to go ahead and make this be an integer type which is what our serials are and we're going to go ahead and say that this is non-nullable and we will go ahead and hit save And now going back to our permissions, we're gonna actually, on that insert statement, we're gonna say that the uh, default columns, we're gonna go to column presets, we're gonna say that the original friend is actually uh, from the session variable of XSura user ID. 
and on the select statements, we'll let them actually select everything. That's not a problem again. Uh, but the uh, we're going to actually allow them to also be able to select the ID of the original friend because that's going to be interesting information for us. And we're going to be able to allow them to update with a custom check where the original friend is equal to their own as their user ID. And we'll go ahead and say with a custom check. All right, yeah, so we'll say uh, they can go ahead and they can change the title. Okay, so we'll save those permissions. Now I'm gonna add additional pieces of data here because I have really weird friends. And so what I wanna do now is I wanna say that on, if I go to modify this, I'm gonna insert two more fields here. I'm gonna add in a created at and an updated at timestamps. Uh, so I need to do one at a time. So save the created at timestamp and I'm gonna insert the updated at timestamp. And the reason why I'm doing those is because this is something that uh, is really important for you to be able to see. Uh, it's something that's really important to see that your friends don't create a pizza and then everybody uses it or orders it and then they change it to something obscene or ridiculous uh, and, uh, and then all of a sudden everybody's orders have a spammed title or something. This is the original Facebook changing the video that you uploaded uh, after people liked it. This is something that you wanna be able to guard against. And we could do that, we could build in guards, we could say that they are allowed to update as long as there are no uh, non like there are no additional orders that include that outside of your own we could build in all those kind of guards and checks and might we might do that later on as additional feature but for now what we've done today is we've been able to go ahead and create these uh, pizza orders and the last thing we need to do is be able to actually create these pizza uh, topping pizzas because we want to allow people to assign uh, or, uh, toppings to a pizza right so we need to be able to go ahead and go to the permissions tab here and so users are allowed to insert with a custom check. And here's where it's going to get a little bit uh, hairy here. <laughs> so we're going to say where on the relationship, the pizza uh, and the pizza orders ID equals accessories ID. All right. So they're allowed to modify. They're allowed to, um, to, to insert where the pizza order ultimately is going to be the accessory user ID. So we'll allow them to be able to go ahead and uh, and they can set the input for columns uh, pizza topping ID and the pizza ID and uh, we'll save those permissions. No column presets in this case. And then we will allow for them to select uh, without any checks, they can select all the pizza toppings. Uh, we'll actually, we'll actually have them be able to no, yeah, that's, that's correct. So we want them to be able to do that. And then on the update, we're gonna allow them to, um, we're not gonna allow them to be able to update the, the toppings uh, or with a custom check. No, we're not gonna allow them to update that. Once it's, once, the, once it's done, it's done, okay. And then uh, deleting, we're not gonna allow either. So that's, this is that's once it's uh, been created it's been created okay so those are going to be our permissions for now we may have to modify these down the road that's okay uh pizza toppings let's go ahead and you can see i've pre-populated some data in here with emojis uh, we're going to go ahead and actually add a permission on here allowing users to be able to select everything they're able to check the emoji the title and the available boolean the um the anonymous users also will get the same permissions without any checks. They're allowed to check uh, just the title and the emoji uh, because you have to be in the system to see what the availability is. And uh, that probably will handle all of our, our permissions for now. So if we go to API now, we can actually see that there's a specific permissions uh, available if we were to be able to turn off the Hesera admin secret. We'll pass in x Hesera user role, not user role, just role. And we'll say x Hesera uh, ID. And actually we need this because we don't have a signed token, so we'll turn this on. But we'll see that they are able to select um, any of their, their pizzas. 
and uh, yeah. Okay, so that handles our API and we will look at the rest of it, uh, connecting this to the front end in the next video.